Good morning. Let's start this Monday morning with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for another brand new Monday, Lord. God, as June comes to its end, half point of 2022, God, we dedicate each day from now on that daily will take up your cross daily and follow you. Help us, oh God. You are God of peace, not of disorder. So help us to have peace, Father, order in our lives, in Jesus' name. This is Word of the Lord uh, from chapter 14, 26 through 33. What is the outcome then, brothers and sisters, when you assemble? Each one has psalm, has a teaching, has a revelation, has a tongue, has an interpretation. All things are to be done for edification. Wow. Amen to that. Psalm. It uh, actually talks about psalm and, and literally means book of the psalms. It's a collective word. It's not just sheet of music. So, so you, some of you bring the worship, teaching of the doctrine, intercession of tongue, and revelation, prophetic, and interpretation, all these things. Why, why are we doing this? To upbuilding, mutual edification, build it up, going up, up, right? Ellicott says it this way. If these varied gifts were employed by each for his own gratification or even for his own spiritual advancement, they would not be used worthy of the occasion. <laughs> they are saying the same thing I just said, but more... Profound sounds more profound. <laughs> if this all these gifts were employed by each of for his own gratification, even for his own spiritual advancement, they will not be used worthy of the occasion. Well, so Bible says, King James, if any man speck speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or by most by three. And that by, of course, by course, and let, what? One interpret. Wow. There's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom is something that's within you. You just have it, and it just comes out. Knowledge, you need to learn. <laughs> Here, this is word of wisdom. Why? The word one must be accentuated. Unfortunately, Christian standard Bible says, let someone interpret. No, one is in, 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 in there, but it's someone. But no, it's just one. The word one is very specific. Why do you think it is? Cambridge Bible for school of uh, college says, and let one interpret. Let there be one, only one, interpret each of the tongue for if the second interpretation were the same as the first, it would be unnecessary. If different, it would be perplexing. <laughs> For who? People. So you could have one, two, three, pray in tongue. Only one. So thus said the Lord. Right? So if there's one, tongue was given, one interpretation, not two. Because this issue is not right and wrong. Issue is, are you going to build up the church? Or are you going to divide the church? Right? It'll be sort of like they were all worshiping a church of Antioch. And they said, who they broke out into tongue. And the one guy said, thus Holy Spirit said, set apart for us Barnabas and Saul. And the other guy said, the Holy Spirit says, do not send them. Uh, no, we have a well, yes, as they say in America, Houston, we have a problem, right? We have a problem, we don't want that. Uh, so it's just being wise, uh, especially as a church. This is Paul speaking as an apostle to the local church called Corinth, they were having all kinds of sexual problems, immorality problems, spiritual problems. They, they, tongue babblers doing it in public without any interpretation. So he said, oh, do it orderly. And I've done, actually, uh, I've seen this done beautifully, right? And 
So the senior pastor standing in front is a symbolic leader. And then you have all this prophetic stuff, tongue. And then he doesn't do the whole thing, but he would say, does he have an interpretation? Okay, John, you are the interpreter for that tongue today. You interpret. So he gives order. And then we're going to talk about that, how order is so important. And it's a little different than um, cosmos versus chaos. No, it's disorder is a little different. So it says that if there's no interpreter, then each of you should keep what? Silent. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Okay? If there's no interpreter, well, keep quiet in the church or be silent. The word silent actually means to keep secret. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Because you most of the tongue, you don't even know what you're talking about. So well, I'm sure it's spiritual. It's something good. Keep it to yourself. Keep it as a secret. Hmm. Um, here, let him keep silent. The him refers to the one who's speaking in tongue not to the interpreter, to himself. In his private devotion, as Apostle Paul himself seems to have done, not in the public assembly. Okay, So I'm in agreement. Let the prophets speak two or three and let others judge, discern, listen carefully, to discriminate. The word judge literally means diakristanatosan is to discriminate. See, we... We turn the word discriminate as such a negative thing, but it's not. It just means to judge, to discern. Well, don't discriminate me. Don't judge me. Yeah, but I am the judge. You know, I mean, if can you imagine if you're an uh, athlete and then, or let's say that dancer or figure skating competition and judges are there and they're giving the points, you know, 9.2. You know, oh my God, 10 point, right? Olympic gymnastic. And the gymnast does their thing and says, don't judge me. Don't discriminate me. I'm like, our job is to judge. <laughs> and to see if, how many years of practice and how perfect, you know. So there's nothing wrong with judging. Matter of fact, we want to be judged, evaluated. Right? We want to be discriminated so that we'll know, are we? Are we of any value in kingdom of God? I mean, are we really serving the Lord faithfully? Right? But we just turn everything like, don't judge me. This is how I was born. Whatever. Okay. Verse 30. If anything be revealed to anyone, another that sit it by, let first hold his peace. If someone sitting there receives message from God, the speaker must stop and let other people speak. Why? For all ye may be prophesied one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted because a prophet should be willing to stop and let someone else speak. The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophet. This is a very important point. The word subject is, means to subordinate, to obey. You know, If you're a prophet, if you're praying tongue, you have every right. And you could subordinate that gift to stop. You don't have to babble on like as if like you have no control. That's what Paul says. Paul says, well, no, it's, it's subject. All the gifts are subject to you. You could control. Matter of fact, not only you, but even the hearers. For we need to listen carefully. And what does the Bible says? To discern. Discern. When someone prophesies over you, you have discernment. You need to listen carefully and to see if you want to receive it or not. Right? It's not mandated. It's not imposed on. Verse 33, for God is not the author of confusion. God is not God of confusion, but God of peace. And in all churches of the saints, God is not God of disorder. God is God of peace. The word disorder is not chaos. It's akatastasias. Akatastasias. It's sort of like instability, not chaos, like crazy. Right? 
insanity. No, it's instability. At the church, you walk into worship, you walk into Christian community, there's got to be order. It shouldn't be confusion, right? It's chaos in the world. But even in, the, I, I hope the church wouldn't be that chaotic, but instability. No, God is not God of instability, no. Nor God of shalom. The word shalom is not used here. It's eriness, eriness. Eriness is different than shalom. It's actually literally means prosperity. It's calm. All the environments in con conducive for, for you to prosper, thrive. Well, let's call it thriving because we're trying to, I'm so tired of the word prosperity using in the wrongly. And create an environment where your children, you yourself could thrive. Walk into your room. Is there an environment you could thrive? Or is it so chaotic? I know some people looking at my, my book and say, oh, it looks chaotic. No, it's in its own way. There's an order. <laughs> All that behind me is Kierkegaard at certain section. And I keep certain books at certain books in the front. Books are all around. And I thrive in that environment. And so the and question that I finished today, as you set the whole week plan this week, is your God, God of peace or God of disorder? Mm. Think about that. Let's uh, do everything in our part today. Set it up so that you could thrive, prosper, and do well. And do not engage in these arguments or disorderly fashion that uh, confuse others and confuse yourselves. Right? But let's just spend the week, start this day right. So Holy Spirit, God, empower us that we may give ourselves to you today, that we may thrive, do well. Shalom, serenity, peace, and order, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.